So today I want to talk about something that um, our forefathers never had the ability to worry about. Something that we, including myself, as modern men, have the ability to do that they couldn't do in the past. And that's worry about our problems. You see, our ancestors didn't have the luxury of existential angst. You see, if they didn't get up in the morning and go after their their food, didn't go out and tend the garden, don't go out and get stuff done, people could die. Winter could come and it could be devastating. But in today's day and age, we have the ability to not worry about that stuff. There's always food around. We can be homeless and be taken care of more than any other time in history. And I think personally, that's done a disservice to men. And today I want to talk about what it is to be a man that doesn't let his emotions rule him, that acts in spite of fear, that basically gets shit done. So before we get started, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, that really helps us to grow the channel, to get this information out to more of your brothers and encourages me to create more of this content for you guys. And in the comments, I would love to hear more about what you want to see in videos in the future as I will be developing this channel out more. I want to make sure it's the content you want. Okay, let's dive in. So to be a man that takes action in life, to be a man that basically gets shit done, you have to step into tension, right? You have to step into the tension of this moment right here, right now. To get an intention, you have to step into tension. So what do I mean by that? Well, your intention is where you're going. That's the destination. If you've got a map and you want to drive to New York, the intention is to go to New York. And the current tension is where you're at now. And there's a distance between where you're at now and where you want to be. If I'm in California and I want to be in New York, there's a certain amount of distance that I have to deal with, the tension between my want to be in New York and where I'm at now. Or a better way to put it is my choice to be in New York. Because the moment I choose to start driving that car and heading towards New York, the moment I choose to get in the car and go for it, I'm now stepping into tension. I'm in choice, I'm out of want, I'm taking action to resolve that tension. So we've got tension and intention. Now, when you look at people today, men today, including myself, in the past, I hated the tension of the now. I didn't want to deal with it. I wanted to distract from it all the time. And in modern society, that could be social media, Instagram, YouTube. It could be porn. It could be drinking. It could be alcohol. Anything so I don't have to deal with the reality of this moment right here, right now. So I don't have to, in essence, face my reality. Our ancestors, like I said before, didn't have that luxury. They had to go out and deal with the crops or they didn't eat. They had to go out and hunt. In a weird sort of way, it kept them present. And I would say in a lot of ways, probably happier. So now we've got the tension of the now. We've got the intention of what we want to create. To become really good manifestors in the world, men that create the reality we want, we have to become really good at both of those. Some men are good at one and other men are good at the others. In the past, I knew guys and clients, personal clients, they were really good at setting intentions, setting goals, writing down those goals, looking at those goals. But they constantly, through positive thinking, would lie to themselves where they're at now. They'd say, I'm here, this is my goal, I've got my goal, but they wouldn't be in relationship to the physical now and what they were feeling right now. So it was really hard for them to get their goal. They would be saying over and over again, I'm happy, I feel great, my life is great. But deep down inside, their body didn't feel that way. And there was no way for them to resolve that emotion. They just focused on where they were going. Push, 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 push. But to be really good at this principle I'm talking about, you have to not only be willing to face your emotion, you have to walk right through them being honest about what you're feeling. Now, the other one is people that are good at the now. They're really good at feeling this moment, flowing with it. I'm out here in nature, I'm in Tulum, I'm enjoying the weather, it's perfect, but don't give me an intention. I don't wanna change anything, I'm just gonna go with the flow. And they get really good at being happy and kind of floating their way through life, but for whatever reason, some of these same people never get anywhere in life. They never make any money, they never get any real success, nothing ever changes for them. And that's because they don't want to change that they're good with the tension of the now but they don't like that discomfort between the intention and the tension that gets created so the moment i set an intention to let's say start a business that's going to make a million dollars well that screws with my reality i've created here 
I don't want to screw with this reality. I like it the way it is. So you have to get really good at being able to move from loving this moment to falling in love with this future reality, projecting it, seeing it as if it's already happened. And you have to get really good at resolving these two realities, the now, the physical now, and the energetic now. So I want you to think about that for a minute. There's the physical now, this physical moment right here that I'm loving, and then the energetic now, the now of me sitting there with a multi-million dollar business, relaxed and enjoying the moment, that perfect girlfriend on my arm, feeling her touching me, feeling her with me right now, that perfect dating life where I'm having amazing sex with these beautiful women. Whatever it is that you're creating, you've got to feel it as if it's already done. That's a weird mind fuck. And so to avoid these types of tension, to avoid the discomfort of one or the other, we tend to distract. If looking at my goals causes me pain because I don't feel like I can ever achieve them, my intentions will never become reality, I'll want to do something to avoid that pain. If looking at my now and saying, I don't like my now, I don't like where I'm at, I don't like the life I'm leading, I don't like who I am causes me pain, I'll tend to want to avoid that too. In both cases, I'm avoiding the now. I'm either avoiding the physical now or the energetic now, the now that I am bringing into being. Remember, when you're creating a goal, you're not creating a goal in the future. You're learning to feel it as if it's already real now without denying your current reality. And when those two cause tension between the the, the sense that they don't make sense to the mind, the mind wants to create resolution. If you're really good at feeling the energetic now and relaxing into it and not denying this physical now, what happens is eventually the physical now wants to turn into this energetic now. It wants to create resolution. The tension seeks resolution. Now, when you're working on this, when you, when you decide you really want to do it, you're going to get up every morning and go to work on creating your reality, setting an intention, loving the now, then the first thing you got to do is realize there's two things you can do. You will be doing every day action, taking action. And there's, there's various forms of action and letting go, letting go of the attachment to outcome of any of these goals. Matter of fact, the attachment to outcome is one of the big secrets. The more attached to outcome you are to get your goal, the more you want it, the more you chase it, the more you have to have it, the more pain you're going to create. Remember, law of polarity. The law of polarity states that one side of a coin can't be true without the other side. So if I have an attachment to an outcome, then I have to be also at the same time creating an aversion to that outcome. Because as the attachment gets stronger, I want it, I want it, I want it, I'm going to be burning myself out through willpower. I have to have it to be happy. I have to have it to feel good. And then eventually I'm going to switch to aversion. The other side, ah, fuck it. I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to go have a drink at the bar. I'm going to go hang out with my buddies. Ah, I didn't want that goal anyway. So attachment and aversion. So when I want a goal, what I need to be doing every day is A, taking action. Definitely taking action. Approaching beautiful women on the street every day saying, hi, how are you doing? And then constantly releasing the attachment to outcome, letting go. Releasing, releasing, releasing. You know, I don't need her to validate me to feel good about myself. I don't need her to love me to feel good about myself. I don't need her to go on a date with me to feel good about myself. I have mastered feeling good regardless of what she thinks of me. And if she does give me an approval, this beautiful woman that I just met, awesome. I'll let it in. It'll feel great. But if she rejects me, I don't know her. That's okay. That's her choice. You know, it's, it, I approached her. If she doesn't like me, she doesn't like me. She has that prerogative. Let it go and move on to the next one. That is a truly secure and solid man. He is looking for this future that he's creating by approaching a lot of women. I'm going to create this future now, right? And I have beautiful women in my life. But at the same time, I'm accepting the reality of the now I'm in. The now I'm in is perfect. I don't need her to like me. I don't need her to love me. Because I know that it's eventually going to happen. And the more released I am, the less attached I am, the faster that's going to come into reality. Now, in this process of creating your reality, turning your intention into 
your now reality through the application of tension, through stepping into tension, through holding the tension, you've got to understand some basic principles. One of them I just said, you got to be willing to hold the tension, right? So there's the tension of what you're creating or the tension of the now feeling in regard to what you're creating. I have amazing dating life, amazing girlfriend, I have amazing business. I'm holding that tension because the body doesn't have that yet. So I'm holding the, the feelings, the emotions, the sensations, and the tension that comes up from that. And I'm letting go of them all at the same time constantly and walking into them a little bit more each day. Every day I get up and I look at that goal and I hold that tension. There's fear, there's doubt, there's worry, let it all go. There's uh, insecurity, welcome it, let it all go. Use the letting go process, which I have plenty of videos on in here and in the Revealing Mastery course. Constantly letting go, take the action, go out, approach two women today, and then release on anything that comes up, good or bad, whether I like it or don't like it. I could have an amazing experience and get super attached to that experience, let it go. Maybe she'll respond, maybe she won't. I could have a really bad experience. I could get real averse to that experience, let it go, process it, step into it again the next day. I've been going through this lately as I've been working on myself and I've been doing some changes around my own intentions in certain areas of my life, especially to do with growing this business, getting it ready for the next phase. And what I noticed is I was really downloading and meditating on the new way the business is going to look, developing the intention, there's been a lot of resistance. And as I've been seeing that resistance, resistance, feeling that resistance, especially in the upper part of my body, my mind has gone into this kind of heavy place that doesn't usually go. And the last two days, I woke up feeling like utter crap, especially this morning. Yesterday was bad. This morning was even worse. So I got up and I did the meditations, the movement, I, I felt with my body, I processed, I did the releasing, I cleaned it up for about an hour, hour and a half, and I felt amazing afterwards. You see, it takes time to go through the storm. It takes time to go through what comes up. And that brings up the next thing that I want to talk about, and that's law of transmutation. It's one of the natural laws. It's one of the hermetic laws. And when you think about it, the law of transmutation states that when you are making a change, which most of the change is ultimately internal. It's how you feel about the goal as you take action towards it, how you feel about yourself in relation to the goal. Things are gonna get weird. Things are gonna get ugly. Things are gonna die, like inside of you. The stories are gonna die, self-doubt's gonna die, sadness is gonna come up, anger is gonna come up, and you have to ride the wave of that. If that takes a day, two days, a week, a month, that's part of the process. That's the law of transmutation. It's caterpillar to butterfly, right? The caterpillar goes into the cocoon, it turns into goo, and then it has to rebuild into a whole new body. Then it has to fight to get out of the cocoon, which builds the muscles on the wings, and then it's eventually born as a butterfly. Well, you go through the same process when you're going towards an intention by stepping into the tension. So I want you to understand that. And as you do that, realize that whenever you're feeling tons of stress, you're probably out of alignment with the tension. See, the tension, when you're really good at it and you're holding it in the now and releasing on it, like you're opening a bag of tension and letting all the resistant emotions and stories and doubts and worries go, and you're releasing all of that, you're going to begin to understand that this is a normal part of the process. That getting up and having these periods of feeling wonky, weird, confused, lost is part of the process to crossing that finish line. Because when you get to the other side of the law of transmutation, there's a rebirth, just like the butterfly, just like the phoenix, just like Jesus on the cross, depending on how you look at it. And that rebirth is what we're going towards. And if you stop in the middle, that's like not crossing that finish line. It's not hitting that end zone. And you run back, the next time you go for this goal, it's going to be harder. So being comfortable with the law of transmutation and the discomfort that comes with it. Number two, it's another hermetic law, is the law of gestation. It's going to take time to create. I kind of refer to this already. As it gets uncomfortable, it might take a week, it might take a month, it might take a year if it's huge of constant shifting, releasing, getting up and having days where you feel like crap and everything's going wrong as you focus on the intention from, ten you step into the tension of the intention, you feel the intention, and you hold the tension, you constantly clean up the tension, which is bringing that, resolving that internal strife around that goal so it can come into your reality through action. 
as you work on that and you step into that every day, you're resolving that gestation period. You're, 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 you're in a sense making a baby. This is going to be your baby. You're growing it inside you. You're growing it energetically and you're going to birth this baby, this new idea, this new business, this new relationship, this new reality of yours. And it will take time. Time depends on your level of consciousness in any given area. Somebody who's a master welder can change the shape of metal much faster than somebody who's just beginning. The gestation period is shorter because his consciousness around welding is different. A guy who grew up around beautiful women is going to meet women faster than a guy who has no experience with beautiful women and has to change the way he feels about himself inside in relationship to the beautiful women. So understanding that is, there is a gestation period and it's equal to your consciousness in this given area and your ability to release and relax into the change of this consciousness, the law of transmutation, is huge. The next one I want to talk about that's really important is the law of rhythm. As you're growing, there's a rhythm to change. There's an up and down, there's resistance, there's the fight of all the belief systems coming up in your head, and then it relaxes. Maybe, maybe in the afternoon you suddenly feel better, you feel amazing like I did today, but there could be more tomorrow. And there's a rhythm like day and night or the seasons to the change. And the change will go through rhythms where you'll start to see results and then maybe the results pull back like the tides and then they come back up again and then they pull back and they come back but eventually as that rhythm plays itself out the change starts to set in place and you've got to honor that rhythm so many of you guys push 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 you drink all these rock stars energy drinks and you push and you push and you, you don't want to feel you don't want to work with the rhythm you don't want to feel the emotions you Yes, the consistency is important. Not letting your emotions stop you is important. Walking right into the tension is important. Moving towards that intention is important, but you've got to dance with it with a rhythm. You've got to flow with it. Sometimes you step back, you go forward. There's an overall feeling of dancing as you move forward. There's an in and out. Think of sex, right? In and out till there's an explosion and then something is <laughs> created, a baby and a whole human being, right? So think of it that way. So when you put these laws together, the, the law of transmutation, the law of gestation, the law of rhythm, along with stepping into tension to bring your intention into reality, and you learn to let go and release, then your whole reality begins to change and you get so much better at dealing with being in and creating the life of your dreams. You see, you can have an amazing life. You can create an amazing life, but you got to surrender. You got to let the life come through you. You can't force it into being because I'm going to promise you right now, if you force your reality like I did in the past with rock stars, energy drinks, Ritalin or whatever, you're forced the reality to become what you want it to become. It will bite back. There will be karma. There will be something to pay for that. And I had that happen. I. I was in bad shape. I forced my reality into being, became depressed, became miserable, became sick from all the pushing, and I had to pay the price. And in that, cleaning up uh, all my thinking is how I ended up where I'm at today. I learned to work with these laws, these hermetic laws, natural laws. I learned to work with the mind, the emotions, releasing. I learned to step into them consistently without using them to beat myself over the head at the same time. I learned to let life come to me. Yes, it's still work. I still got to release. I still got to clean up what's going on inside. I still got to take action. But with every action, as I step towards this beautiful woman and I get triggered and I release and I reach the point where I'm not triggered like I was anymore, I actually can start to laugh at the fact that she rejected me. Well, that's when I'll begin to get success. When I can laugh at her rejections, have fun with her rejections, think, wow, she rejected me good, is when women will start responding and saying, damn, this guy is solid. He's awesome. He's sexy and you'll get less and less rejections and you don't have to literally reach the point you can laugh as you get more comfortable in general and you say you know what rejections a part of life i can handle it i'm a man that's when successes will start to happen i also have a great video on the three stages of success to create success and uh, i'll link that one in the video here too because i think that one's really important in relationship to what i'm talking about so when you start to master releasing, letting go, the revealing mastery course, which I teach, when you start to master these uh, hermetic laws that I was talking about in this video, when you start to master, when you master the whole idea of these three principles of growth that I'm talking about, which I've got to all have a video linked in here, then your whole life will begin to change. Everything will get better. 
So before I go, there's one video you need to check out. My previous video on the Samurai's secrets to intention. Because if your intention's off, even a little bit, it can really make it hard to manifest. You can be really good at this stuff, but your intention has to be on point. We'll link that video in the description. And check out uh, BrianVasion.com or TrueCourage.io. Then there's TheFearlessMan.com, all that stuff. Okay, definitely comment below. I wanna hear your comments on this one. I wanna hear what you want more of because that's huge. Now with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember, only the confident really live and I'll see you in the next video.